director of research and policy at TUC is Dr. Kwabna Nyaku Otu. He's joining us on the night. Doc, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you. Okay, so the the announcement by SNIT on Friday and the announcement by Rock City on Friday would have rendered your strike moot, which strike you had declared for today. But of course, because it was a weekend, you could not have met to decide whether you should call it off or not. So the logical thing people expected you to do was to call off the strike, which you have done today. But did you just call off the strike and said, everything is fine, let's go back, or there are some strings attached? Yes, I mean, if you read the statement uh, put out by organized labor, uh, I mean, we still continue to register our displeasure, wasn't it? Uh, not just over this uh, attempted sale of the hotel, hotels, but with the way Smith has managed our uh, uh, workers' um, contributions so far. So uh, the statement is clear that within the next one month, we are calling for serious engagement and dialogue to address a number of problems we have with Smith and its management of uh, pension funds. Which means that you're using this as a trigger to raise issues that you've had with SNIT all these years? Of course, uh, not just as a trigger. You know, even before this issue came, you know, as far back as 2022, organized labor, in fact, the TUC in particular, had called for a national dialogue on pension. It was in the communique issued after uh, uh, the labor conference in Kwetia incidentally at Rock City, that we should have an, a conference on pensions because there are many issues about pensions that we are not happy with. Of course, all those calls have fallen on deaf ears. So you are right in saying that, yes, we now have a trigger. And the trigger is this issue. Would then we want to use it to address all those other issues uh, related to pensions? I see. Okay, so do you want to share with us what other areas of SNIT's operations you are not happy with as owners of SNIT, to put it more loosely? The, the, the bottom line is that you can go into house flying issues and everything, but the bottom line is that we have in Ghana today pensioners retiring with less than 500 Ghana cities as monthly pension. And if you live in Accra, Tansuman, or Kaneshi today as a pensioner, as a teacher, a retired teacher or a retired nurse, and your pension is 500 Ghana cities, what exactly will you do with that kind of pension? So this low pension has resulted from a number of issues, some related to law, some related to the fact that our pension funds are not being effectively invested. We are not getting the returns that we are supposed to be getting. Okay. So, and and all of that has to do with the fact that we are not too sure how those we have entrusted pension funds uh, to are actually managing those funds to the benefit of Ghanaian workers. So we know that Sene says that the hotels are not doing well. We know that that is not the only investment of Sene that isn't doing well. We know there are many uh, high-rise buildings made on today that are, that are empty, built with uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of workers' money. But they are essentially empty. They are not generating any returns. We know that overall, state investments are generating returns far below the risk-free rate of treasury bills, when in fact they could just have bought treasury bills and get something higher. We know from the ILO report that's net. ILO asked net to undertake uh, to put forward uh, an investment, uh, a funding policy as far back as 2014. Just a funding policy. They have still not been able to do that. We know from the ILO report that net investment uh, uh, reserves will dry up by 2036. And all the things ILO has asked uh, net to do since 2011, they have refused to do them. All of these issues are things that we need to address in this uh, one-month window. I see. Doc, in, on the issue of how much people are paid as pensions, huh? and you said that less than 500, based on a casual look at SNIT, you would realize that what you put in is what you get out of it. So if your salary was 
low at the end of the the retirement period you'll be receiving a low amount because there are people who are earning over one hundred thousand over five hundred thousand uh, nine hundred thousand even cities monthly and this would be the top 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 contributor so if your contributions are low you earn less instead of fighting SNIT, which is only working with what it receives why don't you fight with the employer who pays less and which best three years result in the less than 500 cities payment at the end of the the pension period or the, the so retirement it's, it's, so it's not necessarily true that is exactly what you put in that you get SNIT is a social security scheme based on an insurance and also solidarity principles and that if you are able to invest uh, uh, the pension funds where and generate enough returns, it becomes easier and possible for you to top up the incomes of those that are earning very low. Here we are, the SNET funds are not being properly invested and you are not generating adequate returns to be able to do that. So it's not just a matter. Again, if, it's not just a matter of people earning low. Again, there are technical issues around some of these issues. If you look into the ILO valuation report, here we are in this country where people pay pension contributions on their basic pay, excluding all other allowances. The ILO since 2014 has recommended SNAID to dialogue with the stakeholders to see the possibility of pension contributions being paid on the consolidated pay not on the basic pay alone. Masne hasn't done anything about it. Of course, from Labour's side, we will be wary to do that, to give more money to SNED, when we are aren't too sure how much, how prudent they are actually using the little money they have now. The point is that there are serious discussions SNED can have for these partners to be able to increase pension uh, payout to be able to improve the retirement income security of pensioners. But it looks to us that those people at the helm of affairs are not interested. They, they, they have their own pets. They receive their own salaries, high ones. So they're actually not thinking about the ordinary Ghanaian worker who is struggling, even whilst in work, and will surely struggle on retirement. I have sat in conferences where SNIT has done a comparative analysis where it said that being on SNIT is way better than being on any investment, uh, treasury bill investment. They have done the calculation and they said the numbers support their, their position. You are saying that this is a contrary position you hold? It's not me saying it. I'm just telling you that people are receiving 500 gamma cities less or less as pension, um, as their pension after 20, 30, 35 years. Is that something SNET itself is proud of? Is that something they want us to celebrate as an achievement? I don't think so. So those calculations and those things, uh, I mean, today, Omaru, just imagine that SNET contributions were not uh, compulsory. Just imagine how many people will voluntarily give contributions to SNET, given all that we know and giving what they pay people when they retire. Very well. So this one-month window, what kind of conversations are going to be had? So is there going to be a conference of SNIT contributors where everybody would come and then say whatever they feel like saying to SNIT? Or you have some talking points that you wish to meet SNIT behind the scenes and talk to them about what's going to happen over the next one month? I mean, we, are, we surely have talking points. We surely have done a good analysis of all the four valuation reports that ILO has done since 2011. We know what the things they have uncovered. We know the recommendations they have made already in, in all these four valuation reports. We have also taken a hard look at the pension reform initiative. And we know areas that we could... Uh, uh, we could give a second talk to. Okay. So in this one month, we expect all the stakeholders to sit, including SNET, to be able to look at all the areas that are not really working well for, for pensions in this country, including unification of pensions. We have in this country a large, a, a significant number of public sector workers that are not contributing to pensions. 
but they earn better pension than those of us that contribute. This should not be the case. They don't contribute, but they get better pensions. Those that contribute get inferior pensions. So all these are issues that we need to tackle going forward. Of course, some of them will go beyond it. This, your earlier call that you made, and I'm not sure if it was a TUC call or it was a call by some other offshoot of your your, your union, asking for a shake-up of the managers or management of the institution and even the board. Is that a position that you hold strictly and you expect to see action on or you you are satisfied because of the withdrawal of the deal, you may not necessarily pursue that call that you made earlier? So actually, uh, organized labor did not make that call specifically. Some elements within organized labor brought it out. I think you talk um, in a statement, call for the dissolution of the board. But I must also admit that in our discussions, these things came up. But at least in the final statement that we issued today, we still we are calling for an engagement with the board, uh, which means that there must be a board in place for you to go and do that engagement with it. But the outcome of that engagement could result in many things, including a restructuring of the board and the management of SNET and all that. That one, nobody can predetermine what the outcome will be. So there's no call specifically from organized labor for the dissolution of the board and the and the dismissal of the managers. That That is not a call that you have made, and it's not a call as you are going to make. As, as far as our public statement uh, uh, is concerned, we haven't made that call. But I'm telling you that UTAC, a member of organized labor, and some other elements have floated that idea. But it's, but it's not an idea that you support labor. as a union or as a collective. I only say that I'll support or I don't support. We are going to have an engagement over the next one month. And I have said that many, the outcome of that engagement, nobody can predict. Nobody can predetermine that outcome. If after the engagement, it becomes necessary for some restructuring of SNET and other pension-related institutions, why not? We have to do that. All that we are seeking to do is that we want to put pensions and its management on a sound footing to ensure that truly our members will retire into a better uh, secured uh, income security um, when they reach age 50. Finally, Doc, what happens to the four hotels? Sinead gives us the impression that they're not doing well, they will be running aground. Would you ever accept any plan to privatize them in any way, even if it's a 50-50 basis? Uh, or some capital injection from a private sector, even if it's on you know, 40, 60 basis, where the 40 being the private sector. Is that something you would agree to? Or for you, it is a no-no, you stick to the slogan of Ablaqua, hands off our hotels? The, the, you see, the idea that SNET and its management consistently tell us that those hotels are making losses, they can't do anything about those losses, it's what for the perception that this management, then this management must go. Because really, we know other hotels in town. The moving pigs, the, the, what do you call it, the, the Kempinskis. Smaller hotels like Mev, uh, moving pigs, uh, Mansvik and uh, Rata hotels, we know they are all making good deals. What is it about those hotels? How has it starved those hotels? Say that they are unable to make profit. We know that people are selling cocoa in this country and making profit. If you have La Palme Royal sitting at third prime locations, consistently they are fully booked and they are making losses. Somebody should explain to us what is it. And once we have come to a definite, um, a definite um, point where we know that really nothing can be done, then we will have a discussion. Today, we want to see why those hotels are not making profit. When all other hotels, big, medium-sized, and small hotels, are actually making profit. Thank you. We have a culture mm. in this country where people deliberately run down state institutions, deliberately, and prepare them for privatization. That culture should end. Thank you for speaking to us, sir. You're most welcome. That's Dr. Kwamna Nyaku Otu. He's Director of Research and Policy at the Trace Union Congress.